Hi, welcome to Prep Bytes. And in this video, we're going to be going in and demystifying the Google recruitment process. Google as a company does not need any introduction. The plethora of Google apps that we use on a day-to-day -day basis kind of justifies its huge popularity. The brainchild of Larry Page and Sergey Brine kind of had humble beginnings in their garage and now has went in and became one of the most topmost IT giants in the tech industry. So what exactly is the recruitment procedure at Google? What are the prerequisites that you need for starting your career in Google? How and what should you prepare in order to get placed at Google? All of this and much, much more we'll be discussing in this particular video. And in addition to that, we'll also be solving in some coding questions that had been asked in Google's technical round. So stay tuned and do watch till the end. If you want to know what is the recruitment procedure at Google, all it takes is a single Google search and you will be redirected to their careers page at google.careers. So within this, they have highlighted the entire recruitment process in which they have detailed all the rounds or all the steps that you'll have to go through. The very first step being that of self-reflection, where they're basically requesting you to go in and self-assess yourself so that you can go in and align yourself according to whatever requirements that they have. The next step would be that of job searching. Google has tons and tons of uh, recruitments that are going on live. So if you want to go in and see all the opportunities that are out there, all it takes is for you to go into their careers page and within the, jo within the titles or within the jobs panel, you'll be able to go in and add in certain uh, filters such that you can go in and see all the positions that they're hiring in for right now. Once you go in and you uh, see all the uh, job opportunities that they are hiring for, you can then move on to going in and applying online. The process again is fairly simple. Once you go into and have a particular job position in mind, you can easily just go in and apply online within their portal itself. So once this is done, you can then go in and wait until their staff members will be going in and getting in touch with you telling you that you have entered their hiring process. So once this is done, the entire process of uh, technical rounds will go in and begin. So this is kind of where we want to go in and ask this question. What are the prerequisites for starting a career at Google? So first and foremost, one of the queries that people usually have is that, is, is it important that I have a computer science degree so as to go in and become a Google software engineer? So the answer is fairly simple. No, you don't. For most of the software engineering and product manager roles out there that are offered by Google, you don't need a CS or a computer science degree. Okay. Now, another prerequisite is something that you'll go in and understand once you move across and see all of these postings that they have put out over there. For example, if I look at software engineer three, um, and if you read out the qualifications that are needed, there is going to be something that will go in and stand out. And that, and it's not only for this particular uh, profile, but even in for all the additional profiles that are out there, even if it is for senior software engineer, and also in case of software engineer three for networking, uh, data structures and algorithms seems to be a repeating pattern. And this kind of leads us to a, for a third question altogether, which is how and what should you prepare in order to get placed at Google, right? So uh, the answer is fairly simple. You need to be able to go in and work on your DSA or pretty much simple, uh, your data structures and algorithms. Along with this, having a really good grasp over your problem solving ability will give you that edge so that you can ace that technical round. So once this is done, we're going to be, uh, if you go in and you take a look at the technical round problem distribution, you could kind of go in and see that majority of the topics out there are based on data structures and algorithms, out of which arrays and strings, linked lists, and graphs and trees having the majority uh, share in the set of questions that they've asked in their technical rounds. Let's start with the very first question, which is based around on arrays. So the question goes like this. Given an array of integers and a value, we need to determine whether there are any two integers in the array whose sum is equal to the given value. Return true if the sum exists and return false if it doesn't. So uh, the idea goes like this, that if I have an array and there's a sum that I want to achieve, there's a target value that I want to achieve, we need to check whether there are any two integers 
whose sum is equal to the target that we have. So the brute force approach would be to go in and generate all the possible pairs of integers that we can create and check if any of those pairs have their sum equal to that of our target. But the problem with this would be that the time complexity is going to be that of big O of n square. So how can we go in and optimize this? When you'll be sitting in for the technical round, the set of questions that you're going to be given will be based around in the same pattern. There will be a base or you could say a brute force approach that can be used to solve the problem. But they want, what they want to see is whether you are able to go in and optimize the approach and come up with a logic that can go in and solve the problem in a way more optimal way. So what you can do for this particular question is also fairly simple. What you want to do is to go in and utilize something called as a hash set. So how are we going to be using this hash set? So in order to do this, we are going to need to know this small idea here that if there are two numbers, let's say a and b, whose sum should be equal to the target, then we can rearrange or we can say that the same expression can be rewritten as a equal to target minus b. So what we'll do is we're going to go across each number, okay, and we're going to check whether the, we're going to take the target and subtract that particular number from the target, all right? So let's say if I have 15 over here, right? So what I'll do is I'll take 9 and from 9, I'm going to subtract 15. So when I do that, I'm going to get the values minus 6. So let, I'm going to go in and check, okay, is the value minus 6 already present inside of my hash set? No, it's not. So as the number minus 6 is not present in the hash set, I'll be going in and inserting the value 15 onto my hash set now. Okay, so every time the value is not present, if the target minus the particular value is not present in the hash set, we'll be inserting that value into the hash set as well. Okay, so this will mean that every value that we are going across will be inserted to the hash set. And if the difference between the target and the particular element is already present in the hash set, this would mean that a pair exists whose sum is equal to that of the target. If I do the same for 11, so 9 minus 11 will be minus 2. I'll check in the hash set, is minus 2 present within my hash set? So minus 2 is not present. So I can go in and check it with the next number, which is 7. So 9 minus 7 is 2. And 2, as you can see, is already present within my hash set. So I can say that, yes, so there exists a particular pair, which is that of 2 and 7, which can go in and give me the sum as that of 9. Now, for this particular approach, the overall time complexity will be that of big O of n. In your technical round, this is exactly what you need to go in and replicate. Whenever you're given a particular problem, try to go in and start with its naive approach and then try to go in and optimize it. Try to come up with a logic which is able to go in and solve that problem in a much more effective way. Going on to the next question, we have this particular question which is based around on trees. As discussed initially, most of the questions are based around on arrays and strings, linked list, and then that of trees. Okay, so this question asks us that given the roots of two binary trees, we need to determine whether these trees are identical or not. Identical trees have the same layout and data at each and every other node. So in order to understand how we can solve this particular problem, it's fairly simple. Uh, let's take in an example of having two particular trees with us. Okay, so I've given the names as tree1 and tree2. So if two trees are identical, then I can go in and say that the data that is present at the root should be same. Root is the originating point, right? So the data at the roots must be same. The left subtree should be equal to that of the right subtree of both the trees that we have, okay? So I can say the left subtree of tree one should be identical to the left subtree of tree two, and the right subtree of tree one should be identical to the right subtree of tree two. Okay, so if I compare the roots over here, the roots of both tree one and tree two are same. So now I need to go in and check whether the left subtree is same and the right subtrees are same. Now, how do I check if the left subtree is same? Okay, now it's called a subtree, right? So if I look at the left subtree alone, which is basically the uh, subtree which starts with the root as three, we kind of see the same repeating pattern. The data at the roots are same. And now I want to go in and check whether the left subtree are same and the right subtrees are same. So we can go in and repeatedly take the uh, tree down and keep checking if the subtrees, the left subtrees are same and the right subtrees are same. So when we keep on repeating this, we see a recursive logic that can be utilized to go in 
and be able to check whether two trees are identical or not. So this is the logic that we can go in and come up with. So as to go in and check, this recursive logic allows us to check whether both of these trees are identical or not. The idea is fairly simple. Check if the data at the roots are same. If that's the case, let's go in and check if the left subtree and the right subtree are same. This will follow a recursive approach that you can use to go in and check whether the two trees are identical or not. The next question that we have is uh, again based on linked list. This is a fairly common question which is asked around on many of the product based companies out there, which is to go in and reverse a singly linked list. This can be easily achieved by going in and utilizing three pointers. You're going to be needing three pointers altogether. One pointer for storing the address of the previous node, one pointer to store the address of the current node, and another pointer to go in and store the address of the next node. So what will happen is you're going to go in and start from the very first node, which will be a current node. And th the idea is to make the current node to store the address of the previous node. And you'll be able to keep moving across to the next node using the next pointer. So there are going to be three pointers that we're going to need the previous pointer, current pointer and the next pointer. So these pointers will be responsible to go in and store the address of these particular nodes. At every point of time, as you move across each and every other node in a linear fashion, we're going to make the current node to store the address of the previous node. So uh, the, over, the idea over here is see, across all the questions that you'd go in and see, uh, they are based around on DSA and having proper uh, knowledge of all these data structures and algorithms will give you that edge when you're sitting in for the technical round. So if you want to have more practice on uh, these particular set of questions, you can go in and visit our particular platform at uh, www.prepbice.com. That would be all for this particular video. Uh, do like, share and subscribe.